Oak Street Online! What's happening, fam? Lando here, and we are doing this thing today, and every Sunday, really. So, if you never joined us before, that's a bummer, but you're here now, so awesome. And what is better than this is Up Street Live and in person. So, if you're ever in Georgia, come check us out. Anyway, I have a sitch at school that I'm gonna need some advice about. Uh, basically, it's like I need courage to do something that I know I should do, but yikes, it might cost me some friends. And luckily for me and you, that's what Upstreet is all about this month, courage. So like, yeah, I'm really glad I'm here for this. I'll fill you in just a second. We gotta get this thing over to Caleb, who definitely has courage to do some things that even I think are crazy. So check this out. Welcome back to that show, family. I missed you guys, but I hope you've had an awesome, awesome summer. Guys, we're back into all the shenanigans. Oh, but thanks. first, before we get into it, I gotta introduce you to that show family member. What's up, everybody? My name is Ashley, and I'm pumped to be here. Thanks and for having she's me. She's pumped to be here. Thank we're you. gonna be introducing some new that show family members over the next few episodes. With school starting back up, PU kind of yeah. stinks. We're gonna do a game that finds out whether or not I'm smarter than a fifth grader. Like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? That's like a genuine question. I'm asking. Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome back to this week's episode of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? We have four beautiful, lovely, stunning contestants. And as a reminder, before we get started, it is Caleb versus all of the fifth graders. Are we ready? Yes. All right, our first question. What species can live both on water and land? Oh, Margo with the hand up first. What species can live on both land and water? An amphibian? Yes, an amphibian. I'm gonna give it to you. Good job. That was a hard word. History question. The first atomic bomb attack was on which city? Oh, yeah. The first it's, uh, atomic bomb. Oh, I know this. Hiroshima. And that is correct. Oh! I think we are tied. Kids have some points. Caleb has some points. I would say 100 to 100. Maybe more, maybe less. We are in geography. What is the capital of New Hampshire? If you don't know, New Hampshire is one of the 50 states in the United States of America. And Evan has his hand up. Do you happen to know? Concord. Yes, Evan is correct. That is actually amazing. That's a great. All right, now we're back to science. Here we go. A science question. Which planet is nicknamed the red planet. Evan, I saw your hand up first. What is it? <laughs> Mars. Mars is the correct answer. Uh, you all knew that one. Yeah. Did you even raise your hand? No. I was like, uh, famous. <laughs> all right, next question, ladies and gentlemen. The modern day city of Istanbul was known by what name in the 13th century? All right, Margot. What is the answer? Constantinople. And we are correct. The kids what? are now ahead of Caleb. Can you can say you say Constantinople? I was gonna say Turkey. <laughs> that is a country. That is a country. Yeah. Score check. Caleb, not sure. It's quite quite less than what we have. Back to English, everybody. What is the name of the most famous British playwright? And if you don't know what a playwright is, it's in the word. They wrote plays. Caleb has his hand up. Caleb, who is the most famous British playwright? Shakespeare? And you are correct. Can you give us a oh, line up from I... a Shakespeare play? To be or not to be. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, an Oscar. An Oscar for Caleb. Yes, everyone. Blue, purple, and green are examples of what color? Evan? Cool colors. Cool colors is correct. Good job, that. Evan. That's not a real thing. Yes, it is. There's warm colors, cool colors. Oh, you I mean don't like know if you remember this, but Evan's an artist. I know that now. Yeah, you just got wrecked. And I do believe we might be on our last question, folks. Well, and that works. last question is a mathematical question. Oh, <laughs> what is the Roman number X V I? <laughs> Okay, Quinn, I'm gonna have to give it to you because of your enthusiasm. Quinn, can you just say it into the microphone for me? 16. Drum roll, please. This is the last question. 16 is the correct answer, everybody. That did not just happen. <laughs> sure did. And that is Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And if you weren't watching, it's obviously very clear. Our fifth graders beat Caleb from that show. There you have it, folks. See you next time. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs>
Well, <laughs> turns, out, <laughs> turns out you're not smarter than a I'm not grader. smarter than a fifth grade at all. I don't know how I made it to 17th grade, but this, this is my year. It is. I love that confidence. Anyway, Sorry. it's okay. We're going to wrap up the episode. Yeah. As we say, I don't, you know what we. Just let me know. Yeah, it's. And as we always say, stay, stay saucy, saucy, love on somebody, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace! <laughs> okay. So the school day started out great because we had a substitute teacher and we all know that subs equals a very cush day, am I right? And well, it's time for recess and at our school we have two playgrounds, one for the older grades and then one for the younger grades. And well, of course, we're not supposed to be on the younger playground, but the class convinces the sub that we're allowed to play on both of the playgrounds. Uh, maybe I should have spoken up then and said we shouldn't do that, but I didn't. And I just went along with the class and well, Busted, Mr. McMahon, the PE teacher, totally saw us and came out and told the sub that we lied to her. So now we're all gonna get in trouble tomorrow. But at lunch, a lot of the class decided that tomorrow they were gonna tell the teacher that the sub said that we could play wherever we wanted. They're trying to blame it on her. I don't wanna be the snitch, but it's lying that got us in trouble in the first place. <laughs> My friends will totally turn on me if I write everyone out. But something just doesn't feel right about lying. Courage. Ooh, Lando, that's a tough one. But I think I got you with today's story, so stay with me. I want to start off our conversation about courage with a game. We're going to play Would You Rather Extreme Edition. You're going to see a would you rather question and both options are going to be extreme. But you have to choose one. If you pick the answer on the left, give me a little finger point over here while showing off your bicep. You know, if, if you have one. If you pick the answer on the right, do the same on the right side. Okay, here we go. Would you rather go skydiving or scuba diving? Do mm -hmm. you like the air? Do you like the sea? Which one would you rather do? Both a little dangerous. Personally, I like the land. Okay, would you rather walk on a tightrope or swing from a trapeze? Not a good one if you don't like heights, but you gotta choose one. All right, how about this one? Would you rather drink a bottle of hot sauce or drink a bottle of lemon juice? Oof. I think either way, something's coming back up. Ugh. All right, would you rather go hiking in the hottest desert or the coldest mountain? Hot or cold, which one do you prefer? You summer, you winter? Gotta choose one. All right, would you rather fight a bear with your hands or swim with sharks without a protective cage? Yikes. Uh, either way, I'm running or swimming away as fast as I can. Okay, so that last one was maybe a little too extreme. Both of those options sound terrifying. But here's the thing about most of those scenarios. You could do most of those things if you had to. You might not want to do them ever in your whole life, but you could have the courage to do it. Because that's the thing about courage. Everyone can have it. Courage is for everyone. Even if you don't think you were born with courage, we can all have courage. One of the best examples of courage is a true story you can read about in the Bible. It's about Moses, who was an Israelite. The Israelites were a group of people who God really loved and who God used to show the whole world how real and powerful he was. But Moses, well, he was just a regular guy. There was nothing special or powerful about him. And God wanted to use totally regular Moses to do something totally unbelievable. See, Moses' fellow Israelites were slaves in Egypt. It was terrible and not at all right, but God had a plan to save them. And here's where Moses comes in. God wanted Moses to go to Pharaoh, who was the king, and ask him to let the Israelites go, to let them just leave Egypt. But Moses was scared. He didn't have an army. He didn't have any weapons. Why would a strong, powerful leader like Pharaoh listen to Moses? 
as you can imagine, Moses was really unsure of God's plan. And so he started making excuses. Moses said, God, I've never really been that great at speeches and I, I can't really talk all that well. I'm not the best person for this. In other words, Moses was saying, God, I know you've asked me to do something, but I'm scared. I need courage to do what you've asked me to do. And God told Moses, I will be with you. Moses wouldn't be alone. God would be with him. God went on to tell Moses that he would perform some amazing miracles to prove that God was more powerful than Pharaoh. So Moses chose to trust God when he said he would be with him. And though he was scared, I would be scared for sure. Moses decided to stand up for what was right and try to free the Israelites. So Moses went to Egypt and stood before Pharaoh. And then remembering that God was with him and that he could trust God, Moses said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, Pharaoh, let my people go. Okay, he probably didn't sing it. Anyway, Pharaoh stood up and said, uh, great singing voice, love the tonal quality. Didn't expect that, a little pitchy, but that request, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a no from me, dog. So Pharaoh said, no, he would not let the people go. But God had also told Moses that he was going to send 10 plagues, kind of like really bad punishments, to show Pharaoh that God was bigger, better, and absolutely not messing around about this request. One of the plagues was frogs, tons and tons of frogs. Frogs were all over the land, in their houses, on their beds, in their ovens. Everywhere you looked, there were frogs. And Pharaoh said to Moses, pray that your God will take the frogs away and I'll let your people go. And God took the frogs away. And Moses went back and said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh Pharaoh, let my people go. But do you think Pharaoh let the people go? <laughs> no. So God sent another plague, this time flies. There were so many flies that the land was covered with them. Houses were invaded, plants died. There might've been flies in your eyes, maybe flies in your mouth, flies in your nose. Once again, Pharaoh said, please pray that your God will take these flies away and I'll let your people go. So God took the flies away and Moses went back and saying, I, I mean said, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, Pharaoh, let my people go. But do you think Pharaoh let the people go? <laughs> no. So God sent another plague, this time hail. God said he was going to send the worst hailstorm the world had ever seen. And hail it did. If you were outside when it started to hail, you were a goner. The hail was so big that it stripped the trees of everything on them. And Pharaoh again said, pray to your God that the hail stops and I'll let your people go. But did he mean it? No, no, no. In total, God sent 10 plagues that ruined Egypt and all the people in it until Pharaoh finally, finally agreed to let Moses and the Israelites go. Fine, have it your way. You can have them. Just, just make this all stop. <laughs> Can you imagine being Moses? Just a regular guy with no army, no power, going up against the most powerful man in the world at the time. Can you imagine the amount of courage it would take to do something so big and so scary? But here's the thing. Moses knew he was never going to be by himself, alone in front of this powerful ruler. God reminded Moses, I will be with you, the God of the universe, the God who can make frogs and flies come out of nowhere and disappear like that. That God will be with you and you can trust him. Moses stood up for what is right because he wasn't standing alone. And that promise gave Moses courage and God will give you the courage to do what is right because God gives us the very same promise. God tells us, I am with you. You can always trust him. In a moment or a situation where you need to be brave, remember, God will give you the courage to do what is right. 
we tend to think it's just us versus the person we're trying to have courage to face. And maybe for you, it's someone at school picking on you or picking on your friend. You need courage to stand up to them to tell them to stop. Or maybe you lied to your teacher or your parents and now you have to tell them the truth. In those moments, you're not alone. It's not just you, it's you and it's God. He is with you and you can trust him. Everyone has access to courage when they remember that courage comes from God. God will give you the courage to do what is right. So let's pray and ask God to help us rely on him for that courage. God, we need your help to have courage this week. At home, at school, on the bus, and playing with friends, we're going to need to stand up for what is right. Help us remember that you are with us and we can always trust you. You're awesome, God. We love you. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Oh, okay, so I'm definitely not dealing with a pharaoh, although my teacher does have pictures of herself in front of the Great Pyramids. Is she a pharaoh? That's not possible, right? Anyway, I know what the right thing to do is, and I knew what the right thing to do was to begin with. I just didn't have the courage to say anything, but it does help knowing that God is always with me, and he always is helping me do the right thing. That's something I can say to myself over and over again before I talk to my teacher and tell her the truth. And hey, the class is mad at me and I end up sitting by myself at lunch, just send up a request for a plague. You got my back, right God? <laughs> I'm just joking. Wish me luck tomorrow, friends. See ya. And you make me strong And how could I 